Hello, welcome to the program. Uh, today we are having a discussion with one of our previous guests um, that used to be here with us. Uh, it's uh, Modris Christianis from Latvia. Morris, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, I want you to tell us a little bit about um, when you came to Highway Homeless Project and uh, how you heard about it. Well, in the, at the time I was yeah. in that situation, of course. That's why I came here. Mm. And then, and what was your situation? I was like, without a job, without a place where to stay, so like homeless. Mm -hmm. I was homeless. And then I need I need to look for some solutions. Yes. And through some some people which I knew in some places, and I heard that some some of his friend knows some place who where can, people can stay. Mm -hmm. and, then, and so he can ask if there we can I can go there. Yes. And get the place there for a while. So yeah, and at final it worked out. And then and I just came and yeah, I was welcomed here to stay here for a while yes. as I was in bad situation. Yes. And yeah, it basically gave me the place where to stay. Yeah. Temporary. Temporary. So you, you came, your friend your friend introduced you to the place and you came. And that was what time? What year was it? It was in April in 2010. April 2010, that's yeah. exactly when you came. Yeah. So your friend c c was here and he brought you and you were welcomed and uh, you, 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 stayed, you, you stayed here. And you said uh, you were in a bad situation, you were homeless. Where, 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 where were you sleeping? Uh, before. Yeah, before. when uh, you were homeless, where, where did you sleep? Well, f in the in park. <laughs> in the park? Yeah. Wow. Uh, for for a little while, it yes. was only one week, but mm. yeah, yeah. basically I felt what it is like, and I d didn't like that. <laughs> you didn't like sleeping yeah. in the park. No. <laughs> I see, I see. So so you came here, and um, wh when when you when you came, uh, what happened? What was your experience of being here? Well, I was surprised how pe how people welcomes you in places, how how good they they come and help you and try to help and listen to you and, and yeah, try to make s some solution for your problem and like that and you can see like totally different side of people I used to know before. So you, you were surprised about the help and the love that people showed yeah. and it yeah. was different from the, the, the people you used to know before? Yeah, like before as well, like I haven't been like, in, I haven't came in churches or anywhere so I don't know. I haven't seen the, how those people, how they are, which goes to church and believes in the, to God. Stuff like okay, that. so you've never been around church, or so you've never had yeah. experience of people who go to church and how their faith works and how they yeah. they do they, they, the, the practical way of helping people. You've never seen that. That no. was your first time. Yeah. I see. So wh what, what, has that, that, what, what has that done to you? you? Has it had any impact on your life? Well, it changed me a bit as well, because I became as well like more, more helpful to other people, trying to help other people and, and doing more good things and, and less bad things. Yes. And trying to go to set my, my road in my life in kind of right way, yes. which is like I yeah, see. It should, could, could be the right one. Yes. So, so it's had an impact on you because now you, you, you feel the need to help other people as well, yeah. than before. Yeah. Yeah. So before it could be like I didn't, I don't care or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's like. But now you care. Yeah. Because somebody cared about you. So now you care. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm glad to hear that because that's part of our aim to impact people so that they can impact others, and, and that has achieved that. So now, now you no longer live here. Where, where do you live? Um, no, I live still here in London. Yes. I'm yes. renting a room. Basically you rent your flat, own room? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I'm working. You are working? Yeah. Is it part-time or full-time? Full-time. Full-time? Full -time. Yeah. Wow. 
And uh, when you were here, you were going for some training, you told me. Uh, what was yeah. that, that was yeah. the training? The training was for, for bicycle mechanics qualification. Yes, I remember. And then, and yeah, I was doing that and I, I was already, got, had a job in the hotel as a cleaner, but yeah. it was like just to keep some kind of money for my first room yeah. to rent, to keep me and for food, but you still need to go forward yes. because you can't stay like, yeah. if you're staying in one place, you can't you can improve. You're not feeling like you don't feel good. Yes, you are not you achieving. You need a feel feeling that you're going forward. Not yes, standing on the on one place or going backwards. So basically, yeah, I was doing these night shifts. I was working on the night shifts, and at the same time, I had this opportunity to go for a, a bicycle mechanics qualification. So I took a, those courses was two days a week and I was still going and night shift to course and night shift to course and night shift again and then I had only a rest and after like how oh it is like like two days two, two days. days just running <laughs> I see uh, so so it was the training that you did whilst you were here that gave you the job that you do now uh, because now you work bit, for the a bit while after mm -hmm. some weeks after yeah it was like uh, a bit after I, I was, when I first got my room, it was as well like I, I started to work already when I was here. Yes, you started but working whilst you were here, yes. Yeah, but still I needed to wait for my first salary. And yes. It was like a month and something like that and, and it was as well really hard. <laughs> yeah, so, so whilst you were here, you were waiting for your first salary. Yeah. So you waited and after you got your salary, then you were able yeah. to go and rent a room and... and it was as simple as well when you get your money, but and then you need to look for the room. Yes, and there is so many offers, but loads of them is not not suitable for it's you. It's not you suitable. Just go take a look on that room or something. You just mm. no. It's and not. It's not. It's, not, it's not the right one. Yeah, and at final it takes like a h half a month, a month till you find the right yeah. one. Yeah. So so staying here all that time helped you to first earn your first mom's income and then take time to look yeah. for a suitable room but because you were here you, you know you, you had the uh, the time to do that and so now you work as a bicycle mechanic yeah now now i have as as my qualification bicycle mechanic i i went for a job uh, which is as well like bicycle mechanic but first i i needed to start up like uh, with the simple jobs in the company yeah and work my myself up in the this company till till I get this mechanics position. Good, good. And yeah, n now now I got it, and it's like there's one goal is achieved. Yes. But I still I still need to look forward and yeah, look yeah. for my future and yeah. what to do next. Okay. So you you went back to Latvia recently. You told me you what what, what did you go to do? Oh. Mostly for it was like to see all m all of my family because at the time when I went back, uh, my brother came back from Afghanistan. Okay. He was in mission as in well. Okay. And my mother now is in UK as well working and okay. Uh, so she went at that time as well back to Latvia. So and my oldest brother lives in Latvia, so. We kind of, in one time, we came together okay. and spent some time, some time together, together. With, with all my family. Yeah. Okay, so that was a special moment. Of course, yeah. Yeah, that was a special moment. That, that's, that, that's wonderful. So, so you've moved quite a long way since April uh, uh, 2010 uh, by being yeah. sleeping on the bus to uh, finding Sorry. a shelter, moving on to train, uh, getting a job, becoming a bicycle mechanic, and uh, now renting your own place uh, yeah. is, is a long way. Not, not only that, but you have changed because now before you, when somebody was in a problem, you would say you don't care, but now you are helping people yeah. and, and, and it's changed your life. And for us, that's the best part of the story. Uh, the best part of the story is an impact uh, on somebody's life that can uh, impact other lives. And that's exactly uh, what, what you are doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy for you that you've come this way, uh, continue in that same way, and I believe that uh, as, as you 
as you do that, you know, you, you, you are going to get to a place, you know, that, that uh, 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 God has for you. So, any future plans that you have? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, basically, there are lots of f plans for the future. It just, there is this moment and situation mm. which makes you want to go on for that goal. Yes. For that plan. Yes. But there is like, yeah. Like in work, I want to achieve more in the work, mm -hmm. or look, look for better opportunities, of course. And as I have in free time, as well, I, I, I would like to improve my skills and, yeah. and languages and any and, other and skills. Things like that. skills. What about your spiritual life? What, what is your plan? With spiritual, it's like keeping like to feel be optimist, optimistical. Yes. Feeling against other people and and doing good things mm -hmm. and not doing bad things. You go do bad things. Yeah. And then and maybe sometimes coming to church. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me. I don't know. <laughs> because of the work? As well to work and when you're off the work you you are just like tired mm -hmm. and uh, you're not used to come to church and stuff like that and it's hard. But yeah, trying. Okay, trying. it's like first step. <laughs> first step, yes. So keep trying, uh, keep trying, and uh, we are in a, in, a, in, a, in a new season. So take the right steps, and I believe that um, as uh, you go along, you know, God will take you to a higher level, and uh, you come back with a bigger testimony. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. yes. <laughs> and we thank God for how what God has done in your life. Thank you for coming. Thank you. God thank bless you. Viewers, you had. Modris Prisjanis from Latvia and uh, what God had done in his life uh, since coming here the transformation that has uh, transpired in his life and I believe that the same God who did it for him can do it for you he is the same yesterday today and forever he does not change and so no matter what your situation is uh, commit it into the hands of God believe that he's able and uh, he will hear you and he will do it uh, I will see you again next time on the program. Stay blessed. Uh, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the testimony from Modris and how far God has brought him. And um, I want to share a portion of scripture here with you to encourage you in our responsibility as believers. And, and this is something that is close to the heart of God. Uh, I want you to look at the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. In Isaiah chapter 58, the Bible makes something clear. It says, Shout it aloud and do not hold back. From verse 1, Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For, the day, for day after day, they seek me out. Day after day, they seek me out and seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. Now, I want you to pause here. It said, day after day, they seek me as if they are a nation that do the right thing. Now, when you, when you hear seeking God, you, you will assume if they are seeking God, then they are doing the right thing. Uh, yes, but, but, but you see, they, they, they were seeking God. They were, these were people who were going to church and doing religious activities and praying and fasting and doing all kinds of things. So on the surface, they, they looked very religious. They, they were seeking God. But actually, they have forsaken God. So, so it looks like a contradiction. God is saying they are seeking me, but they are forsaking me. How, how can that be that they are seeking you, but they are forsaking you at the same time? Uh, what it is, is that they, they were doing the physical part of things. They were doing the ceremonial side of things, but their heart was detached from God. Uh, and, and so the key is the heart condition and not what we do outwardly. Uh, it, it's not attending every prayer meeting or Bible study, as much as all those things are important, but our heart must be in what we do. So here, uh, uh, God is telling them that you seek me as if you, 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 
you 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 are uh, uh, you love me you want to do my will but actually you 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 ha you are not in verse 3 it says it, it says that they asked me for just decisions and seem eager for god to come near them why have we fasted they say and you have not seen it why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed they are asking god a question we fasted you you there is no answer so so wh why is that they are asking god then he said yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please you exploit all your workers your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with the wicked fist they were fasting all right uh, but they were exploiting their workers they were fasting but they were fighting among themselves uh, and they thought that because they were fasting everything should be okay and it didn't matter what else they did and god is saying no that is wrong and so when you come to verse 6 it says it says this it's not this the kind of fasting that i have chosen to lose the chains of injustice to untie the cords of the yoke or to break the yoke and to set the oppressed free and break every yoke is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will come quickly now god is now giving them a prescription of the kind of fast he expects of them and he says the first thing that i have chosen that i expect of you is to break the chains of injustice those who are suffering those who are being unjustly treated it's our responsibility to step in and speak for them and to defend them and help them we cannot walk past and ignore those who are being unjustly treated so justice is important we are supposed to break the chains we are to untie the court the yoke the oppression we should set the oppressed free those who are oppressed of the devil our job is to set them free now th these things are done both on the spiritual side on the physical side uh, that there is a side that you can actually pray for yokes and burdens to be removed but also there is the side that you have to actually physically get involved to make it happen sometimes we pray and we leave it there we, we don't go the next step to actually make it happen God wants us to be involved in making these things a reality and that's why he's talking of the practical aspects of the things that we are supposed to do and what are they we are to share our food with the hungry that is the practical side we've prayed yes it's good but we have to go to the next step and share our food with the hungry to uh, give shelter to the stranger and, and we must clothe the naked and not turn our, our face from our own flesh and blood. So, so God is saying, yes, there is a spiritual side and a physical side. When they come together, then you are doing my will. So if somebody is hungry, as James said in James chapter 2 verse 14, he said, if somebody is hungry and you just tell them, oh, uh, uh, go and, and, and be full. And, and if somebody is na uh, naked and you say, be warm and, and God be with you. It, he said that that is like faith without works. That's what it means. You are expressing faith, but you are not doing anything about it. Uh, yes, of course, God can meet the need. But God meets the needs of uh, people through us. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. Okay, he's no longer here. We are his representatives. And we are supposed to do that. Jesus fed the 5,000. Yes, he could have sent them to go and buy food somewhere, but he wanted to set as an example that, yes, it's important that we build this into uh, the ministry that God has given us, that we actually meet the needs of people. So we should feed the hungry, we should share our food with the hungry, provide shelter for the wondrous, the homeless, and, 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 and clothing 
for the naked. This is something God expects of us. And it's important that we do those, these things. And if you go into the book of Matthew chapter 25 from 31 downwards, Jesus was speaking about when the Son of Man comes. And, and he began to narrate uh, uh, to, to the people uh, uh, how things are going to be on that day. And, and there was uh, some surprises there. Uh, some people were actually surprised by what Jesus said. He said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the, on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invited you in? Or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers, you did for me. One, what you did for one of the least of these, my brothers, you did for me. And that's the key. When we help the poor and the needy, we cannot separate that from doing the work of God. We are actually doing it for Jesus. He personalized it. He said, I was the one you were clothing, I was the one you were feeding, I was the one you were giving shelter to. He created them in his image and his likeness. He feels their pain. He makes even his sun shine on both the righteous and the wicked. His rain rains on both the righteous and the wicked. That's the kind of God we serve, who makes sure he gives food to everybody on the planet. That's the kind of God we serve. So Jesus took it personally here. And the opposite side, you see, he told those that didn't do anything to help the poor. And, and they said, well, we, we didn't see you hungry. We didn't see you hungry, so, so what, what, we didn't do anything wrong. And he said, well, as much as you didn't do it for any of, any of these, my brothers, you didn't do it for me. So, brethren, when we neglect people, we are neglecting Jesus. That's what it is. You are neglecting your Savior because he takes it personally. That is his property. If, if you hate somebody, you, you love somebody and hate their child, I don't think they will be happy. If you love somebody, that person will expect you to love their child as well. And so, we cannot separate serving God from serving man. That's why he said, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind and soul. And he said, the, first, the second commandment is equally as important as the first, which is love your neighbor as Christ. God puts it in the same category. And all of our worship hangs on these two things. Okay, so it's important that we understand that. Uh, and so these are things that God expects us to do. He also says that he that lends... Uh, uh, gives to the poor actually lends to the Lord. When you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. Isn't that a privilege? Think about it. How can you lend to the Lord? Whatever you have, you got it from God anyway. But he said, when you give to the poor, you lend to him and he will repay you. That tells you that the poor is important to God. They, they, are, they are very, very important to God. And, 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 and the scripture encourages us in so many ways to, to, in the book of Hebrews 13, it talks about uh, we, 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 we must uh, 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 meet the needs of strangers. 
He says, by so doing, some of uh, entertain angels unawares. Some of these guys are angels. <laughs> they, 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 they might be in tattered clothes, but they are angels. You could miss an angel because you, 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 you didn't connect uh, because of the way they appeared. You, 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 you thought they were just, no, angels can come in the form of normal human beings. And he said that people have entertained angels on our ways. So there, 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 there are great things here. Okay, so, so it's important that we understand these things. So when you go to Isaiah 58, it tells you about the benefits. Uh, the benefits of, of, of uh, doing these things. The benefits are huge, my brothers. The benefits are huge. And I want to read just a few of those benefits to you. It says, then your light will break forth like the dawn. Your healing will come quickly. Then your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord, the, then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say here, um, if you do, so, so there are huge benefits. Healing is there. Breakthrough is there. Protection is there. Answered prayer is there. Everything that you can think of is here in the benefit. And so, so, brethren, when you do this, uh, uh, the, the, there is not just an eternal reward for you, but even in this life, there is great reward for you. Your prayers will be answered speedily. You will be in help. He said your help will spring forth speedily. Your light will break forth like the dawn. These are the benefits. So, my brethren, these are the things that God expects of us. Let's do it and bring glory to his name. If this program has impacted you, our details are on the screen. Get in touch with us. You can help us in so many ways. Uh, through prayer, finances, uh, uh, skills and talents that people have, any kind of resources, but we can do it as a team. Together we can meet the needs of the people that God cares about and raise them up for his glory. May the Lord bless you. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, testimonies. We aim to bring you more of these vibrant, life-changing testimonies. Jesus is at work in our midst. And we want you to be part of what God is doing. And so get in touch with us uh, so that together we can take the gospel uh, uh, to the ends of the earth. And I want to let you know that as you do that, we will be sending you regular updates for you to be abreast with what is happening. And we will be standing by you to be a part of our team to do, do great things and, and change into our nation right on your doorstep. We hope to see you soon. God bless you.